Now here's something you are not going to hear on the mainstream media. What you do hear is warmongers arguing that we must protect Ukraine because it is a quote unquote democracy. But they're lying. Ukraine isn't actually a democracy. For example, to hold on to power, Ukraine's president shut down the three TV stations that were openly criticizing him and his policies, imprisoned the head of the opposition political party that had come in second place in their elections, and went and arrested and jailed that party's leaders. This is exactly what Putin has been accused of doing. But Ukraine did this all with the support of the United States. And make no mistake. The United States will defend every inch of NATO territory with the full force of American power. An attack against one NATO country is an attack against all of us. And the United States' commitment to Article 5 is sacrosanct. So Ukraine is not in NATO. No other country is being threatened. Let's keep listening. The United States and NATO are not a threat to Russia. Ukraine is not threatening Russia. <clears throat> Neither the U.S. nor NATO have missiles in Ukraine. We do not, do not have plans to put them there as well. We're not targeting the people of Russia. We do not seek to destabilize Russia. To the citizens of Russia, you are not our enemy. Okay, so we can all go home now then? That's it? Russia is not a threat? We're good? An invasion remains distinctly possible. That's why I've asked several times that all Americans in Ukraine leave now before it's too late to leave safely. It is why we have temporarily relocated our embassy from Kyiv to Lviv in western Ukraine, approaching the Polish border. But the American people understand that defending democracy and liberty is never without cost. This is a cause that unites Republicans and Democrats. See, the problem with that statement, though, Republicans and Democrats are not united on this. Here's the proof. Now, here's something you are not going to hear on the mainstream media. What you do hear is warmongers arguing that we must protect Ukraine because it is a quote unquote democracy. But they're lying. Ukraine isn't actually a democracy. For example, to hold on to power, Ukraine's president shut down the three TV stations that were openly criticizing him and his policies, imprisoned the head of the opposition political party that had come in second place in their elections, and went and arrested and jailed that party's leaders. This is exactly what Putin has been accused of doing. But Ukraine did this all with the support of the United States. Now, that was your Democrat, you remember Tulsi Gabbard, who ran for president and was called a Russian asset by the Democratic presidential candidate Hillary Clinton. But while Mrs. Gabbard isn't in Congress anymore, she's not the only one that's asking questions. Florida Republican Congressman Anthony Sabatini first started asking questions as to why more than 165 NATO troops were going over to Ukraine back in December on a training mission. And less than a month ago, he started a petition to, quote, tell Joe Biden there should absolutely be no U.S. involvement in Ukraine. Now, we asked him to come on our show tonight. We haven't gotten a response. And frankly, we're not surprised. The guy doesn't want to be labeled a Russian asset, just like Tulsi Gabbard, and possibly lose his political seat. I get it. So Joe Biden told you what the Russians are doing, but what about the Ukrainians tonight. Well, a lot of their oligarchs just fled the country on their nice private jet airliners, and our team tracked where they're all going. Look, Amsterdam, Istanbul, Munich, Vienna, Switzerland. Interesting. Certainly when I was growing up, we were told, like, NATO is important because it's defending Europe from the Warsaw Pact. Now, what people don't know is that the military alliance of the Soviet Union is formed in 1955. But in 1954, Stalin has just died in 1953. Mm -hmm. In 1954, the Soviet Union asks the United States to join NATO. The Soviet Union asked to join NATO in 1954. And the Soviet Union also proposed that Germany be reunited 
you know, this whole thing about East Germany, West Germany, these, the Berlin Wall, the whole image in the West is that the Soviets wanted to keep the Germans divided. But the Germans, the Soviets offered to reunify all of Germany, but make sure it wasn't remilitarized because the Soviets had lost 27 million people to the, largely to the German invasion. And they want to come into NATO. And the United States says no. And then the Soviet Union forms the Warsaw Pact countries. Yeah, no, I think that's right. NATO is an instrument of imperialist policy. It's an instrument designed for containment. It's designed to make sure that the you know so-called Soviet sphere of influence, the socialist camp, the Warsaw Pact, whatever you want to call it, and it has been called many uh, different things during the course of the Cold War, that it remains in its place, essentially, and that they limit its ability to spread. Because as you point out, in Western Europe, there are many people who want more socialist-style governments. They certainly want peace. They certainly want the natural intercourse between Europe East and West, which includes a large chunk of Russia. I mean, it's actually unnatural for the continent to be divided in this way and for there to be an obstruction of the traditional thousands of years of relationships between all these different places. And so sort of the natural trend is away from a policy that will allow the United States to, remain, to maintain, as you say, that black discipline, to maintain the two spheres of influence on a, global on a global scale, which is absolutely necessary for them to be able to exploit the different areas of the developing world, because, of course, people will leverage any gain they can, they were already leveraging the Soviet Union. So imagine if, say, France or if, you know, whatever, some combination of the low countries or someone had entered in more on the side of, you know, anti-colonialism, peace, detente, whatever you want to call it, obviously that becomes even more of a leverage point against the, you know, Bretton Woods institutions and their, you know, style of, of neo-colonialism through finance and the U.S. military that, of course, was using force to, to get behind all of these different attempts to dominate the globe. Now, the Warsaw Pact was the Soviet version of NATO because NATO's formed in 1949. It's kind of like nobody really knows yet how important it will be. Then the Korean War happens, and suddenly NATO is like a dominantly important institution for the reasons we've been talking about. Now, in 1954, the Warsaw Pact is formed in 1955. So that includes the Soviet Union, East Germany, Czechoslovakia, Bulgaria, Romania, Poland, and did I say Albania? No. Okay, Albania. So this is the Warsaw Pact. So it's a Soviet-led military alliance. And people uh, in the United States, certainly when I was growing up, we were told, like, NATO is important because it's defending Europe from the Warsaw Pact. Now, what people don't know is that the military alliance of the Soviet Union is formed in 1955, but in 1954... Stalin has just died in 1953. Mm -hmm. In 1954, the Soviet Union asks the United States to join NATO. The Soviet Union asked to join NATO in 1954, and the Soviet Union also proposed that Germany be reunited. You know, this whole thing about East Germany, West Germany, these, the Berlin Wall, the whole image in the West is that the Soviets wanted to keep the Germans divided, but the Germans, the Soviets offered to reunify all of Germany, but make sure it wasn't remilitarized because the Soviets had lost 27 million people to the, largely to the German invasion. And they want to come into NATO. And the United States says no. And then the Soviet Union forms the Warsaw Pact countries. So we talked about this last week. Mm -hmm. We said like at the end of World War, at the end of the Soviet Union, when it collapsed, why wasn't Russia, which is now led by Boris Yeltsin, an American puppet, and very weak, why weren't they just brought into NATO? That's an, see, it's a very important question for people to understand, because my belief is that if the Soviet Union had entered NATO, then the U.S. would have lost the discipline over the European capitalists who would have gravitated mm -hmm. in the direction of the Soviet Union, which is their natural you know, trade partner. Just like after the collapse of the Soviet Union, uh, Russia could have been integrated into NATO, but eventually Russia, when it got back on its feet, would be an economic and political pole that would allow Europe to have an alternative to American hege hegemonic mm -hmm. domination. And I think that's so important because I think that gets to the nub of why NATO was, in fact, um, you know, not dissolved in 1991. But again, I think most Americans would have no idea that the Soviet Union asked to be part of NATO in the middle of the Cold War.